If you're a PC gamer, new processors and motherboards and new memory technologies are cool and all, but ultimately it's the graphics card which is king of the hill. There's just something so cool about the hype and announcements surrounding new graphics cards, whether it's the performance improvements, uh, new technologies, the improvements to ray tracing, and all the other stuff that you come to expect from a new launch. So, with this video then, I want to talk to you guys about AMD and NVIDIA's strategies. Sure, RDNA 4 is going to be targeting the mid-range, but what about RDNA 5? And how will it fit in against RTX 50 and also the next, next generation of NVIDIA cards, which is codenamed Ruben? There's a lot of stuff to get through here, so let's just start right after this quick message from the sponsor of the video. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which isn't activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. For the sake of brevity, I'll not delve too deeply into RDNA 4 as we've discussed the specifications and rumours extensively over the past months, but it's important as a basis for its successor and AMD strategy going forward. So I will give you a crash course. Feel free to fast forward a few minutes if you so desire. Rumours point to RDNA 4 being comprised of two chips, both N44 and 48, with the latter being the more performant of the two. Naturally, multiple SKUs can be made out of each chip by trimming down the specifications as needed. RDNA 4, which I presume is going to be the RX 8000 series, although AMD are yet to provide us official nomenclature, seems destined to launch later this year. I have one or two sources who still insist early next year due to the abundance of RDNA 3 chips which haven't been sold through. However, frankly, I think this year is much more likely and I guess we'll know for certain at around Computex. N48 sports 32 workgroup processors and likely 16GB of RAM courtesy of a 256-bit bus. This of course would be in its fully decked out configurations. You can see the specifications on screen for both 44 as well as 48. Reports from KeplerL2 on Twitter state that RDNA 4 provides a big increase in ray tracing performance, and as I've covered in even more recent leaks, there seems to be some significant architectural improvements for RDNA 4 over the current iteration of RDNA 3. Basically, these rumours point to essentially fixing scaling issues with RDNA 3. Some people may remember that there were a lot of rumours, including from myself, that RDNA 3 was targeting over 3 GHz for its clock frequency, and this just didn't bear out. However, interestingly, there was a slide from AMD which did seem to point out that that was actually an early target from within the company, and I do believe that AMD did miss the targets. But either way, it doesn't really matter. What does matter is RDNA 4, or RX 8000 series, is going to be excellent for budget and mid-range gamers, but it doesn't really help you if you want to push all of the visuals out at 4K. So for that, we have either waiting for RDNA 5, which is looking to be very impressive, but also NVIDIA's RTX 50, also known as Blackwell. So what exactly are we going to see from both of these companies? Well, let's start out with NVIDIA. Rumours from the proven leaker Coppertite 7 provides us a basic outline for the specifications of the full GB202 silicon. My own sources generally corroborate with Coppertite 7, but we're looking at a 192SM, 512-bit memory bus, as well as a big bump in performance. Now, if we look at the number of SMs, it does seem that we don't see a significant increase over AD102's 144, compared again to Blackwell's 192. But of course, this would be the full die configuration, and GPUs like the 5090 and the 4090 
snip and tuck parts of the GPU as Nvidia deems appropriate. There's also been a recent report that I covered from Chip Hell, and this indicates that the Founders Edition design has actually changed quite significantly, not least of which to accommodate 16 memory chips. This would imply that the rumors that we've been hearing are true for both the bus width as well as 32 gigabytes of memory being on board. There have also been reports from several outlets that GPUs are hitting up to 600 watts. Frankly, I don't think that this is a story at all. NVIDIA were testing Lovelace way beyond 600 watts, if you recall all of the news cycles back in the RTX 1490 lead up. And honestly, this is just on par for the course with GPU development. I've also been told that there were some tests for the 1590 at 520 watts, and that was a potential figure that NVIDIA were considering, but it's just meaningless because again nvidia can change this stuff at the drop of a hat literally a bios update can change power limits so it doesn't really matter and they can have a board which theoretically could handle 600 watts because of things like overclocking or what have you but it doesn't mean that that's what the gpu is going to be operating at all of the time and well we see that for example with the 1490 either way on screen you can see the specifications of both gb 203, which should theoretically um, be powering the 5080 and the GB202, which will power cards like the 5090 and maybe also the 5080 Ti or what have you. I'm scheming over the specifications because we've discussed them several times and, well, again, they're on screen. But the real crux of the matter is NVIDIA seems hell bent on releasing these cards this year. Now, there has been some confusion exactly what will happen in terms of the order of release. There have been some reports that the 5080 shall launch first, but the exact window between the 5080 and 5090 is not clear. AGF, another well-known leaker on Twitter, seems to think there's only going to be a couple of months, uh, sorry, a couple of weeks-ish separating the 5090 and 5080's launch anyway. As for performance, again, Things are a little tricky because even if the performance figures that I and others have heard are true, you don't necessarily get the full picture. For example, if you were to hear a specific increase in performance, is that detailing compute performance, which doesn't necessarily translate to gaming so well? Is it raster performance? Does it include ray tracing, DLSS? Is it an average across several benchmarks or is it just a singular one? And even if so, at what resolution? I presume it would be at 4K, but again, that's a presumption. Also, is it the full die being tested or a cut-down variant, and how much of a resemblance does that cut-down die bear to the final configuration to, let's say, a 5090? For what it's worth, and with all of those caveats out of the way, I've heard several figures, basically between 50 and 70%, which does seem to be a raster performance versus its predecessor, the way it was told to me by one person, it seems to be the target of the 5090 versus the 4090, but again, with those asterisks in place. And I've been told Blackwell does offer significantly better ray tracing performance. I was given a number of over 2x, but does that include jiggery pokery, such as DLSS being included? I'm not certain, but I'm probably going to guess yes. I'll continue to dig, as I'm sure others will. What does matter though is NVIDIA will be launching their high-end products first. They will have a significant lead time on AMD for RDNA 5. So basically, if you want a high-end AMD card, well, you're just going to have to wait. But this is where things become much more interesting. So speaking to several people in the know, RTX 50, as I said, does launch first. RDNA 5 seems destined to launch late next year. RDNA 5, though, is very interesting for a lot of different reasons. For a start, it will allow AMD to offer multiple compute dies for home use. Now, this, of course, was rumor for RDNA 4, but this got canned. I'll tell you more about that in a second. But a rumor for the Halo RDNA 5 configuration I've heard is over 360 compute units. I've heard actually 380 as a common figure. Now, it's possible that this is wrong or isn't the full configuration, but if it is true, the amount of performance increase over, let's say, the 7900 XTX is absolutely bonkers. That is 96 compute units as a point of comparison. All the watts on Twitter did hint that we're looking at a significant increase in the number of compute units for RDNA 5, but 
again, it'll be very interesting to see how that plays out. But let's assume that that figure, 380, let's say, is true. Will we see that launch for desktop gamers? Because yes, RDNA 5 will be available for games, of course, but also there will be variants for other uses such as servers and professional hardware. In this way, AMD are taking a couple of leaves out of Nvidia's book. Like we saw with Blackwell and Lovelace, AMD are basically tweaking and tucking their architecture in their own distinct AMD way. Now, due to cost reasons, I frankly don't know if a full configuration would be available to gamers because, well, I suspect it would be very expensive. Frankly, I've heard mixed information. One person even told me that AMD just plum hasn't even decided this yet. However, this information is a few months old. So obviously in a couple of months, things can change a lot. As I said earlier though, RDNA 4 has big improvements across the architecture and ray tracing, but RDNA 5 seems to ramp this up to 11. Hell, maybe even a 20. RDNA 4 Halo products were axed for a lot of reasons. One of the big ones, however, is that AMD just felt that they needed to put as many engineering resources as possible, both for hardware as well as software, into RDNA 5. Now, RDNA 5 does seem to bring with it several improvements. One of those is registry renaming. There's actually a patent from AMD that seems to indicate that this is actually something they're working on, and I have been told that RDNA 5 does include it. Another big change I've heard for RDNA 5 is the way it's going to be handling matrix operations. The general gist is that it seems to be an evolution of what we've so seen with uh, CDNA. Basically, these, um, these additional uh, matrix operation bits, if you will, are going to essentially be part of the SIMD block itself. Now, this probably means it's going to be sharing the same registers as the actual shaders on the GPU, and it's going to be a really big change for AMD going forward, the register rename in particular. Ultimately, this has some very interesting ramifications in compute for games and home uses as well. Remember, it seems that Microsoft will be tapping into RDNA 5 and the PS6, well, maybe RDNA 5 or even later. So the general consensus is RTX 50 is going to be a very impressive architecture. However, RDNA 5 is going to outperform it significantly. AMD are basically creating RDNA 5 to essentially take on RTX 60. And when you think about it, it just makes sense. AMD are releasing significantly later. Speaking to quite a few people, RTX 50 may see a refresh of sorts, but the scope of this hasn't been decided yet by NVIDIA. Now, if you've paid any attention to NVIDIA's strategy over the past several generation of GeForce cards, you'll see that they do have a pattern. They release TI slash supercards later on in the life cycle of the generation, and they do things like bump up the CUDA core count, maybe increase the clock frequency of the GPU, increase the TDP, or perhaps even just offer faster memory or widen the bus. Now, I presume that there won't be a change in strategy here. To my understanding, GB202 silicon is huge. I've heard around 700 square millimeters, a little smaller, but still very large. So NVIDIA's scope to bump to higher SMs would just be very limited. I mean, technically, I guess they could do things like shift to a different manufacturing process, but... So continuing, from what I'm told, Rubin, named after Vera Rubin, is potentially going to be launching a little bit earlier for desktop than initially expected. I'm probably going to uh, mispronounce his name, I apologize, but... Um, Ming Chi Kuo. Uh, hopefully, again, I've pronounced that correctly. If not, I really do apologize. But uh, they are a TF securities analyst. They recently confirmed that R100, again from the Rubin architecture, will be entering production end of next year. So that's 2025, roughly Q4, and a launch date for the data center in 2026. Now, if you start to think about the timing here, and I am, you know, also making some extrapolation, this would mean that the design of Rubin is pretty far along. I mean, it's not like they wouldn't have even started design at this point, let's just be honest. So it's going to be very far along, and that's putting it mildly. RDNA 5 launches again late next year, give or take a quarter. So let's say 
Q1 2026 at the latest, maybe Q3 2025 at the earliest. I'm going to personally say, you know, around Q4. Realistically, AMD could have several months head start on the RTX 60 cards, which I again presume would be Ruben. Now, I don't know enough details about Ruben yet to tell you how it performs or the specifications. A source did tell me that it would be NVIDIA's first gaming MCM GPU, but frankly, I'll believe that when I see it, because NVIDIA seems to be holding off that ACE card for as long as possible, so until there's more information, I'll hold fire. For the data center though, I've heard that there's 12 36GB, that's a 12 high stack type um, for uh, the memory, that by the way is using HBM3E. But again, I have no details regarding the specifications of the number of SN, changes to the architecture, or anything else. One common theme that I've been hearing from multiple sources is that AMD are no longer going to be operating its GPU division with essentially a shoestring budget. Now, basically, when Zen was being crafted and up until, well, just quite recently, most of the engineering resources basically got diverted to their CPUs. And it makes sense. It's not that the graphics division didn't get any resources, but... They certainly didn't get as many resources as perhaps would be ideal, and things are changing quite significantly. It's going to be very interesting to see not just, of course, the hardware specifications, as it's cool, of course, to talk about the number of workgroup processors, all of that stuff, but ultimately it's going to be the new technologies which get introduced with these new pieces of hardware that really is going to be paying dividends, I think, going forward. I think we can get some hints of this with the recent announcements from Microsoft that I covered, where basically a lot more work now is going to start to be generated on the GPU itself. Basically an evolution of Execute Indirect. And I will be very interested as well to see what uh, AMD will be doing for the next generation of consoles. The room is, of course, that the PlayStation 6 is going to be using RDNA 5 or RDNA 6. It's not 100% clear. And obviously with custom uh, graphics IPs and stuff that Sony or Microsoft start to tweak, it becomes very difficult to get an exact, well, one-to-one -one match anyway against, let's say, a desktop product. Xbox seems to be using RDNA 5-ish, again, a custom design. So all of this naturally will be influencing the way that we see games going forward. As for NVIDIA, well, yeah. I'm going to be absolutely fascinated to see how Blackwell ends up performing. And also the pricing. <laughs> I have heard some quite alarming projections slash speculation regarding the pricing of RTX 50 GPUs. And ultimately it's very early to know right now because I don't think pricing is set in stone. But I would not be surprised whatsoever if RTX 5080 and the 5090 cards are noticeably more expensive compared to what we have with RTX 40. The fact is as well, of course, that ultimately NVIDIA, for example, are making money hand over fist in GPUs for a data center. So there's also that. It's going to be very interesting to see how the next couple of years shapes up. With that said, guys, take care of yourselves. Have an amazing day. Bye for now.